ArbiterOnline.com brings you Out of the Blue with Tariq Whiteley, Drew Mays, Jessica Christensen, Jake Garson, and Dustin LaPre on sports. You're watching Out of the Blue, the Arbiter's special Fiesta Bowl coverage. Hello everyone and welcome to the first ever Arbiter webcast, Out of the Blue. I'm Drew Mays. And I'm Sheree Whiteley. We'll be with you all week long leading up to the festival. We've got in-depth game stories and features you can only find here at ArbiterOnline.com. And we've got two of the most entertaining guys in sports, Dustin LaPre and Jake Garson. We'll get to Dustin and Jake shortly, but first, the Broncos hit the gridiron for their first time since their arrival in Phoenix. But not the gridiron you might think. Jessica Christensen has the story. The Boise State football team gained new fans yesterday as the Broncos participated in the Youth Gridiron Day at Scottsdale Community College. Local youth organizations such as the Boys and Girls Club had the opportunity to interact with both coaches and players from Boise State. The event not only brought smiles to the youth, but the players as well. So I just real quick wanted to ask you what it means um, for you to just be able to be out here with these kids, to be a role model, to have an influence on them. You know, I think uh, every one of us has been in their shoes, you know, at this time, and I think... Uh, for many of these kids, it's a little bit tougher than we had it. So I think uh, this is a time where, you know, you just get to give back to the community and you see these kids, they have so much potential. And, you know, sometimes it's only a couple people just get them in the right direction. But, I mean, there's a lot of talent on this field, so I hope these guys really uh, keep playing sports and let them uh, let that be kind of the thing that, you know, gets them going in the right direction. What do you think is one of the biggest messages you try to communicate to any of the kids that you come in contact with? You know, I think, uh, <clears throat> I think what Coach Pete touched on, the school thing is huge. Um, for us, whether we have a good game or a bad game, I think we always have that to fall back on. And uh, it's almost taken for granted that, you know, our school's paid for. But really, in the end, I mean, that's the main thing we have. That and just to, you know, enjoy your youth, have fun. And, you know, so many of us would kind of give a lot to be back in their shoes and just be relaxing right. and having a good time. But uh, Additional activities will include the Youth Football Clinic presented by FSN Arizona at the Glendale Youth Sports Complex on Friday. Thanks, Jessica. There's so much planning that goes into getting the team's equipment to just a regular season away football game, much less one of the biggest bowl games in the country. It took an 18-wheeler and another 20-foot truck for the Broncos to pack all that was needed for the Fiesta Bowl. Team equipment manager Dale Holsty is the man in charge of making sure the Broncos have everything they need for their New Year's matchup with Oklahoma. You know, we've traveled before for uh, the Forward Bowl and Liberty mm -hmm. Bowl, and, and uh, we didn't spend probably as much time. I think we we're only there about four days uh, before the game where we've been down here, you know, we're going to be down here a week uh, for this game. And uh, so it's just, you know, the bigger stage and uh, national spotlight. So we want to make sure everything looks good. And uh, so we want to have all the equipment looking the best we can. Both the Sooners and the Broncos held their first press conferences today since arriving in town. Oklahoma players made no bones about their respect for the Broncos and the program. Um, I, I, I have seen, you know, bits and pieces of games, uh, ones that are televised, you know, them being up north as they are, you know, we don't get those games as much, but, uh, uh, you know, I have seen them, I've seen the blue turf and, and all that, but, uh, you know, have didn't really, you know, analyze them as much as I have now, uh, knowing that, you know, we're, we're playing them. Yeah, you know, they're pretty good. I think the fundamental sound team, they play well together, you know, and execute their assignments, uh, you know, tackle well. And, uh, you know, got guys that, you know, they, they know what they're doing. So when you, when you got that all together, you know, it makes it a lot easier. And, um, you know, like I say, they, they got some ball players. How about to hear more about today's press conferences and team practices, let's bring in the two guys that covered the events, Arbiter Managing Editor Dustin LaPre and Arbiter Sports Editor Jake Garson. Thanks, Sheree. This morning, Jake and I, along with dozens of other national media members, were allowed to interview and meet members of the Oklahoma offense and the Boise State defense. It wasn't all hugs and kisses, however. Oklahoma star running back stole center stage with his talks about coming back from a collarbone break that he suffered nearly eight weeks ago. Yeah, you know, like I say, you know, during the time I've been off, you know, I've been working real hard, you know, trying to keep myself, you know, at, at, at the high level. But obviously, you know, they don't, they don't take up for me out there playing, you know. So um, I've just been, you know, working hard, working real hard. So. I'm out there practice, you know, um, looking, looking, you know, looking pretty good and just knocking the rust off, so I'll, I'll be awkward. ready. The question on everyone's mind remains whether the Fiesta Bowl will be Peterson's final game in an OU uniform. Uh, this is pretty simple, man. I'm, I'm really the type of person, I don't listen to people, you know, speculate and, 
you know, saying this and saying that about, you know, my life, you know, so, this is my life, you know, uh, I'm gonna make the best decision for me, what I feel, what's gonna make me happy, so, that's pretty much it. Boise State Mike linebacker Corey Hall knows what it will take to contain the dynamic Adrian Peterson. And, um, we're going to have to try to contain him, and uh, you know I think that's the key to us winning it. Um, if we can go in and stop the run, um, you know I think we're we're going to have a chance to be successful. And I think uh, going into any football game, if you if you can go in and and run the ball on the other team and stop them from running the ball on you, uh, I think you have a good chance to be successful. And um, that's what we're going to try to do. Just watching him on film, like you can tell he's a great running back. Um, you know I'm sure that'll even be more magnified when we get in the game and. Uh, you know, actually line up against him. Um, it, you know, it always kind of seems like that. Like, you know, you'll watch a guy on film and, oh, he's pretty good. And then you get in the game, like, he's, you know, he's real good. And I think that's definitely going to be the case with him. And, um, you know, especially where he hasn't played uh, half of the season. Um, you know, just the plays that we've seen are great plays that he's made. And, um, you know, I'm sure he'll have some more to come. Following the press conferences this morning, both teams had full pad practice today. They got out and they really hit and they really got ready for this game. That's right. There's a lot of preparation left to be done within a week of probably the biggest game in Boise State School history. Now, there's a lot of keys to this week's game. It's going to be an interesting matchup for both teams in a lot of aspects. One of the big keys, one of the big doubts that fans have about Boise State in this big game is the secondary matching up with the bigger, faster, more athletic wide receivers of Oklahoma. And there was a lot of talk at the press conferences about the one-on-one -on -one coverage that would be faced. Malcolm Kelly is one of the star young wide receivers for Oklahoma, and he really talked about how they were going to have to take advantage of a lot of play action. Now, the way they figure it, with Adrian Peterson and the dy dynamic Oklahoma rush offense, the Broncos are going to have to bring eight men into the box and try and stop the run. So they figure that the Sooners will be able to hit them with the play action pass. It, it makes sense, and that'll single up the coverage on the outside, and possibly, possibly the BSU cornerbacks could get burned. And the thing is, with uh, how well Patrick Allen, the backup running back for Oklahoma, who got a lot, of, a lot of time when Adrian Peterson was hurt, even when Adrian is out of the game, they have an even more dynamic backfield with two great running backs that BSU is definitely paying a lot of attention to. Now, you talked to Coach Stoops today a lot about what, what it was going to take to control the line of scrimmage and how important that would be. Do you want to give us a little insight on what Coach Stoops thought about the line of scrimmage game? Well, he was kind of short on his answers. He just really wanted to say that it's vital to the success of his team that they always control the line of scrimmage. Well, that's all from us from the sports desk. We have uh, four more days of this. We're down here in Phoenix. Uh, check us out on the podcast show, and we'll uh, catch you around. To hear more from Dustin and Jake, tune into their podcast, Arbiter Sports Talk, each night as they break down the Fiesta Bowl from right here in Phoenix, Arizona. I'm afraid that's all the time we have for tonight. Thanks for watching, and be sure to check back tomorrow for another edition of Out of the Blue. Have a good night, and go Broncos.